Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So continuing our discussion about antibiotics, now we are going to talk about the linozolid. The linozolid is from antibiotic class that is called the oxazolidinones. So oxazolidinones. Those also are protein synthesis inhibitors. Uh, and the linozolid is one of these agents of the oxazolidinones, which was synthesized in the, in the mid-1990s, uh, and that's to combat resistance caused by gram-positive uh, organisms, such as the MRSA, the multidrug resistant streptococci, and the vancomycin-resistant enterococci. And the linozolid is used as a last resort antibiotic. Same with, with the streptogramines, uh, and uh, it is very effective. And in this video, we will talk about the pharmacokinetics of, of the linozolid, the mechanism of action, the spectrum, the resistance, the therapeutic uses, and the adverse effects. So let's start. So let's start by talking about the pharmacokinetics of the linozolid. Uh, and with the pharmacokinetics, we always use this abbreviation, the ADMI, which uh, the A stands for administration, distribution, metabolism, excretion. We will start with the A, which is the administration. So administration of the linozolid. So first, it is available as oral and IV formulas the oral formula is completely absorbed so complete absorption uh, to the oral formula and that's because of the low molecular weight of the linozolid now let's talk about the distribution so distribution of the linozolid First, the molecular weight of the linozolid is 373, and that's low, so that's why it has a good absorption. Uh, also, the half-life, so half-life is from four to six hours. Uh, the uh, the linozolid cross the blood-brain barrier in good concentrations, so good concentrations in the cerebrospinal fluid. And it has good penetration to bones and joints, so it can be used to treat osteomyelitis, so good penetration to bones and joints. It has also good penetration to body fluids in general, so good penetration to body fluids. And that's the case with the low molecular weight antibiotics. Most of them, they have excellent uh, penetration to all type of barriers in the body, and that's a, a good thing. The linozolid also cross the placenta, but it is not teratogenic, so not teratogenic, and it crosses into the breast milk, but it causes diarrhea into the growing child because it kills the bacterial flora of the intestine of the baby, and it causes diarrhea. So, uh, breast feeding causes diarrhea, lead to diarrhea. The metabolism of the linozolid is in the liver. And the excretion is by re renal and non-renal routes. So excretion by renal and non-renal routes and that's, that 
uh, make uh, that's very good because uh, because the people who have uh, renal failure there is no dose adjustment required for these people and also the people who have hepatic failure you also you don't need to dose adjust this patient too now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the linozolid uh, the linozolid is a protein synthesis inhibitor protein synthesis uh, inhibitor it bind into the 50s subunit bind 50s ribosomal subunit and inhibit protein synthesis and it is a bacteriostatic in general but when used against the streptococci it becomes bactericidal except uh, streptococci it becomes bactericidal uh, if used against this bacteria now let's talk about the spectrum of the linozolid so the spectrum mainly is gram positives mainly and mostly gram positives uh, it works on the staff uh, including the uh, the MRSA and it works on the streptococci including the multi-drug resistant streptococci it also works on the enterococci including the uh, vancomycin resistant enterococci and it works on the Listeria monocytogenes monocytogenes and it works on the Corinobacterium species so Corinobacterium species and it also works on the uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis so it works on mycobacterium tuberculosis including the resistant citrines of this organism uh, and it is very important drug in treating the multi-drug resistant tuberculosis uh, yeah uh, now let's talk about the resistance against the linozolid so the common resistant pattern by the bacteria is by modifying the binding site of the linozolid on the 50s so modifying the binding site of the linozolid and uh, there is no cross resistance with any other protein synthesis inhibitor so no cross resistance now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the linozolid and the first one is the orthopedic infections such as the osteomyelitis the septic arthritis and the others so orthopedic infections and it also works on resistant infections in general so uh, resistance resistant uh, or infection with resistant organisms so infection with resistant organisms such as the tuberculosis the mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, the no cardia strains and other uh, microorganisms it is also it works also on the community acquired pneumonia and the health care acquired pneumonia with the resistant organisms so now let's talk about the adverse effects of the uh, linozolid so we have the common adverse effects such as the uh, rash the headache and the GIT symptoms such as the vomiting the diarrhea and the nausea it's, the linozolid also causes serotonin syndrome 
so serotonin syndrome in susceptible people. Uh, the linzolid act as an uh, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So linzolid act as monoamine oxidase uh, inhibitor the monoamine oxidase this enzyme works on the brain to remove the neurotransmitters from the brain such as the, dupam the dopamine the serotonin the noradrenaline the adrenaline this monoamine oxidase enzyme works to remove these neurotransmitters from the brain and the linozolid act as inhibitor to this enzyme so this would lead to accumulation of these uh, of these neurotransmitters and would lead to the serotonin syndrome and normally the linozolid is not enough to cause the serotonin syndrome the patient there is some patients that are more susceptible to the serotonin syndrome such as the patient who are taking the drugs that act same as the linozolid act as monoamine oxidase inhibitors such as the class of drugs that's called monoamine oxidase inhibitors and also there is the selective serotonin the serotonin reuptake inhibitors and the tyramine containing foods those all might increase the possibility of the uh, serotonin syndrome and the serotonin syndrome is characterized by a number of symptoms including agitation decrease in blood pressure uh, dilated pupils tachycardia tachypnea insomnia and it can become very dangerous the linozolid also might lead to uh, bone marrow suppression so bone marrow suppression if used more than 10 days and it might lead to uh, peripheral neuropathies and optic neuritis so peripheral neuropathies and optic neuritis and that's if used more than 28 days and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching please make sure you like and subscribe and see you in the next video peace